Thank you, Dr. Santoro, for your presentation. Now uh, it is time for the question and answer session. Um, I will read the questions uh, uh, provided from the YouTube channel. Uh, the first one is a question for Professor Grigay Taloja. Uh, Anna asked uh, this uh, question. She says, I am interested in applying for the PhD program at Politecnico di Torino, but I don't know any professor from this university. What can I do? Okay, so um, uh, the best uh, procedure would be to contact directly the coordinators of the doctorate program you are interested in. Uh, if you are interested in any of the topics on electric electronics, communications, engineering, you write me an email directly. Uh, if you need to know which are the, where are the contacts, you go to our website, Opolito, follow doctorate, doctorato. Uh, you have a list of courses available. You select the courses and you have access to all the contacts there. You send me an email, uh, you write uh, uh, the topics you're interested in, and then I can put you in contact directly with the professors working on those topics. Uh, okay, um, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Griveta Loggia. Now, uh, it, uh, there is, a, let's say, a general question for all our guests, uh, our invited speakers, but also for sure for, our, for the coordinators. Uh, they, they ask, how important is to know something about the research topic I want to apply for before starting? Do I have to study anything about that? Uh, it is a general question. Uh, if uh, someone uh, would like to answer, it is uh, very pleased. Uh, maybe uh, also more, more than, one, than one person. Okay. Uh, thank you. I can give a first try since I spoke last. Um, well, it depends. Um, usually, uh, students that start a PhD program are not knowledgeable or mostly not knowledgeable in the specific topic they're going to work on. Uh, in some other cases, uh, they just continue their master thesis. So the situation can be very different. In any case, we have a, a wide number of uh, training courses that are offered. So if you need to complete your knowledge and there are some specific aspects that are required to enable you to carry out your research activities, uh, then this will be attended first in your study plan so that you fill the gap and then you can start your, your own research activity. This is, uh, I would say, common to all students. In, in all cases, you are missing something because the master degrees uh, will not give you all the knowledge that is required to proceed. So in any case, a well-constructed study plan will allow you to fill the gap. Thank you, Professor Griveta Loja. Uh, if someone would like to provide an additional answer, I have also a request for everyone in the for all our guests. Please, uh, can you turn on your uh, video, please, and the, the, the microphone when you would like to provide an answer. Thank you so much. Someone else who would like to answer to, to the question in other words, providing something additional to what uh, Professor Pietalo just said? Uh, let me uh, add something. Uh, uh, well, obviously, I agree with uh, what my colleague uh, said uh, about uh, uh, the question uh, um, which was raised. Uh, but I wanted to stress uh, even more uh, that uh, what is crucial is uh, clearly the motivations uh, uh, and uh, the commitment uh, of the student uh, and the skills uh, the student own. Now, clearly, uh, if uh, the student uh, is an expert in metrology, he could have some problem in moving to uh, machine learning. Uh, if he's an expert in, uh, or she is an expert in uh, uh, graphics, uh, he may have a problem in uh, moving to uh, antennas uh, and so on. Uh, still, uh, I have uh, several examples of uh, uh, very good students uh, coming from uh, one uh, area uh, of research of uh, domain of application uh, who then decided that uh, they were interested in another topic and started uh, uh, in this topic uh, with uh, great success. So what is crucial is probably uh, to have a very precise idea of uh, which are the uh, goals uh, of my uh, PhD curriculum. It's crucial uh, to contact uh, uh, 
the, the possible advisor so that uh, uh, you can uh, create uh, with the advisor a reasonable plan, uh, taking into account uh, your starting point uh, and uh, the goals that you can achieve. Uh, and then, uh, well, uh, there is clearly a training uh, step uh, at the beginning uh, in order to really enter uh, into the uh, domain. Uh, in my expertise, uh, we have uh, several students uh, coming from uh, outside the, our university, even from abroad, uh, coming from different expertise. Well, all kinds of exp experiences uh, uh, may work. What is crucial is the enthusiasm, the commitment, uh, and the synergy with uh, the advisor, uh, which is uh, crucial. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sozare Ordo. Uh, if someone would like to provide an additional question, uh, can uh, I think I see that anyone is, uh, nobody's uh, uh, turning on the microphone, so I, we can move to another question. We have a question uh, for Leila. Uh, Stefan asks, did you find any particular difficulty in joining the PhD program of Politecnico di Torino coming from another university? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, so if you um, are thinking about the procedure, I didn't because I, find all the, I found all the information on the um, uh, website. And uh, when I had a question, I wrote to the Scudo office and uh, they give me all the information I need. And then, uh, sure, I graduated in the uh, University Università di Torino, and uh, it was uh, different uh, going to work at Politecnico with a group I didn't know, uh, but I uh, was interested uh, in uh, doing a PhD, and I found uh, um, a very nice group that I can work uh, with. It's a thing that I think it's important also to uh, learn to work uh, with people uh, in group. And uh, then it was a challenge, but it was a nice one, and I suggest, uh, uh, suggest you to do it. Thank you, Leila, for your answer. Now we have, uh, uh, okay, a gen another general question for our guests. I think that it is uh, more for uh, the uh, uh, current and former students. Uh, do you think the PhD gave you something you exploit every day in your work? You will not have otherwise. Someone would like to answer. For example, Dr. Mineto, do, do you have an answer? Uh, would you like to provide an answer about that? Thank you. Um, personally, I think yes. Uh, it can provide you some some helpful. Uh, I don't know, some helpful skills for uh, for your job, uh, any, any kind of job that you could address in principle. Uh, since I'm still doing research, uh, I could say that everything I learned during the PhD is still helpful for me from the communication skills from, uh, I mean, passing through, of course, writing, uh, scientific writing, and also all the other skills that I, I earned during the PhD. I think that uh, this answer could be addressed better by someone who is spending the knowledge uh, earned during the PhD in some companies, probably, I don't know, maybe uh, doctors, Giulio Santoro, or uh, even uh, uh, the other colleagues, probably is, mm, they, they, they could provide some, some kind of better answer to how can they spend uh, their knowledge, their, uh, their skills. Sure, I, I can add something. Something, something else? Okay, maybe Dr. Santoro, would you like to, to ask? Yeah. yeah, I can add something. I, I wanted to say that I definitely agree with, uh, with um, Alex uh, on, for example, on the um, public speaking skills uh, in, in the industry is really, really important because you work um, with other people, not just in your team, but also with people in other teams. And you really need to explain to these people uh, the work that you have done. You need to be effective in such way that you under they understand you, you understand them, and you can um, work well uh, together. I, I'd say that also the PhD has helped me a lot uh, in being able, as I was saying also before, of coming out of my comfort zone. Um, so doing something that um, is not exactly what I've studied, 
so going beyond actually what 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 I have studied. Um, so this has helped me a lot, and the PhD is a lot uh, about that, right? Going going beyond. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Marcelli. Would you like to add something more about about that? Mm, yeah, sure. So, what the PhD brought to me in my everyday life. So, for sure, I'm. I think that when we have a new problem, considering that we do kind of try to research, so we quite often have to brainstorm and find a solution for a new challenging problem. Uh, I find it very, very nice and easy, given my experience in tackling problems which were not easily solvable. So it's very nice when you, when you try to think out of the box. And I think the PhD gave me some, some hints on this. Then, uh, of course, technical writing and also being able to read the paper and understand the target of the paper, understand uh, what they want to prove. Uh, and if there is some value behind the paper, I think it's something that is very interesting and can be applied basically to anything that we read, anything technical at least. So, yeah, for sure there is some value in our everyday life. Okay, thank you. We have another question for Professor Sonzaleorda, given by a student, Paolo, who says, how are the publications related to the PhD? Is there any restriction related to number of publication, uh, publications a PhD student has to carry out? Okay, let me try to answer to this uh, very important question. Well, first of all, let me start from a statement uh, um, which uh, should be very clear. Uh, the common metric uh, for uh, evaluating, uh, which is used uh, worldwide for evaluating uh, uh, research, is uh, the number and the quality of the publications. Okay, So publications are needed, and uh, if you are doing uh, good research, it's uh, normal, it's uh, expected that uh, you make uh, publications, because uh, uh, it... A researcher is someone interacting with the rest of the community and the interaction means also, uh, let's say, publishing papers, in presenting papers in conferences and uh, on international journals, okay? So if uh, the um, uh, PhD, uh, if your PhD career is going on uh, well or reasonably, uh, well, you will publish uh, papers. Uh, it will come, uh, let's say, in a very natural manner. Now, clearly, uh, publications also depend on the specific uh, scenario. I mean, uh, in some cases, uh, if you work strictly with, co um, in a strict relation with the companies, uh, well, there may be some uh, issue because uh, companies uh, may want uh, perhaps uh, to patent uh, something before uh, publishing and things like that. Uh, and coming to the real answer, uh, yes, there are requirements in the sense that uh, uh, Polytechnic, or like uh, all uh, uh, major uni research universities uh, worldwide, uh, has uh, some uh, minimum requirements, okay, which depend on the on the curriculum, uh, which may depend uh, uh, even the change uh, uh, in uh, in time. There are some requirements. My expertise is that these requirements are uh, naturally uh, matched. If uh, the, um, the PhD is, uh, let's say, correctly attached and uh, performed. So I don't think that this is a, a major problem if everything is uh, going on well. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sonzare Order. Now we have a general question for all coordinators, maybe. Uh, will the actual uh, coronavirus situation uh, affect the number of PhD positions next year and the economic fund somehow? I can try to address that. Uh, I don't have a glass ball, <laughs> so I cannot give you for granted an answer. But it's a fact uh, that uh, the strategic plan of Polito is investing a lot uh, in PhD students. Uh, Polito is putting down a lot of money to uh, to be able to cover all the scholarships. And by the way, keep in mind that Polito scholarships are higher 
by about 200 euros than other scholarships in other universities in Italy, right? So you are treated better here than in other places. Given that, uh, I don't think this will be affected because uh, uh, the scholarship coming from the Ministry of Education will stay. And uh, given the type of relationship we have com to, from, to, with companies that sponsor specific uh, thematic activities and external scholarships, I don't expect this to, to, to diminish. If I can add uh, something, uh, I agree, Stefano, because uh, also for the PhD in metrology, who is going to work with the Hingrim, we don't expect any change in the amount of grants and uh, in the total value of the grants. Thank you. Uh, uh, Professor Sorza Veronda, would you like to add something else? Or can we move to another question? I mean, I, I will agree. I am agreeing with uh, what uh, has been said, especially on the fact that it is difficult to forecast the future, although I'm uh, quite optimistic about the fact that uh, the situation will not uh, degrade uh, um, so much uh, in the future due to the current situation. Uh, okay, now I, we have um, other question that is, uh, let's say, general for the coordinators. That is, uh, how much? But uh, probably it is uh, something that uh, already we already discussed previously. But uh, if you would like to add something else, and it is related to the fact, uh, if the work of the master's, master's thesis is, strict, is strictly related to the subject of the PhD research, but this thing uh, price has been uh, detailed previously. Professor Sorge, you can confirm to me this thing. Yeah, I can confirm uh, we can have all possible situations. Uh, you may continue if uh, you agree with your tutor, your master thesis, if that is promising. Of course, it has to be a long-term project that is lasting three years and that is expected to lead to some new results, publications, etc. But you can also change completely subject. So, for instance, I have a student who is a circuit theory student and she's doing a cardiovascular modeling of the human blood circulatory system. So she changed completely her subject. Thank you, Professor Guevetalocha. Now we have uh, a question for uh, Dr. Santoro. Uh, what, uh, what is your experience in getting to work at ERCO? Would you like, uh, uh, would you say many of your colleagues have a PhD? Thank you. It is written by Enrico. Um, so my experience so far is great. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, really happy with the with the work and the environment. Um, yes, I have to say that many of my colleagues have a PhD. Uh, not just here, I know that many other colleagues, they, they work in the US, they also have a, a PhD, um, many more than, than I was thinking. So uh, I would say is clearly, a plus and uh, also the kind of job, right? It's uh, R and D. Um, it's almost like doing research, so it's it's really useful. Thank you. We have the final question for Doctor Minetto. Enzo writes: How his doctoral experience has changed? Has uh, uh, he in a joint venture with a company compared to a purely academic doctorate? Okay, I say it again. Uh, he asks, how his doctoral experience has changed? Has he in a joint venture with a company compared to a purely academic doctorate? Uh, I, I got the, I, I read it in Italian, so I, I, can, I can guess the answer. <laughs> um, basically, I, I would say that my, my scholarship was not provided uh, by, by the company and was not a PhD, a joint PhD program with the academic and company. It was a, a pure academic PhD and was supported by um, ministry scholarship. So for uh, was, a, was a government scholarship. 
Uh, I honestly speaking, it's uh, a difficult question to be answered because I don't know the difference. Uh, I, I spend most of the time working uh, side by side with professional researcher, researchers, more than one, of course. And uh, this was a great opportunity to um, somehow to learn very fast how research is, uh, how research is basically. So it's made by uh, looking through papers and literature and trying to set up some math scripts and trying to make them working and uh, and so on. Uh, it was a, a very fast process in terms of learning, but I think that it could be the same even in the academic uh, academic world because there are some other people working with you that are maybe professional researchers from the academic side. Uh, and I think that the, the shape of the, of the job is not that different. Uh, of course, uh, in a company, in a real company, this is a, um, a research institute. Links Foundation is a research institute and is a, a joint, uh, joint venture between Politecnico di Torino and uh, a private um, Instituto, Instituto San Paolo. So uh, it's fairly different from uh, a pure company. Again, so as I, I'm just adding differences over differences, but it's a research institute, so it's very close to the academic experience and it comes from the academic experience. So um, I would say that uh, it was a great opportunity, but I think it's not very different from the, from the, the, the pure academic world. That's the, the answer to, to this question. So uh, thank you, Dr. Mineto, and uh, okay, uh, I thank you for all the participants for uh, for providing their experiences. And uh, before concluding, I would like to provide uh, some final comments about uh, this event. Uh, okay, first of all, we apologize for some uh, small problem in the video streaming, but uh, I would like to thank all the people who were behind the scenes uh, from the IEEE student branch of Politecnico di Torino, from the IEEE Women in Engineering, and from IEEE ETA Capanù. As uh, Maurizio Capra, Julia Ardesi, Alunzata Paviglianiti, Cristian Colecci, uh, Carmine Paolino, um, um, Deborah Caldarola, uh, Simone Dutto, and Sandro Sartori, who work behind the scenes for making this activity possible. I would like to say just briefly an important thing, uh, that, uh, that is uh, that all the uh, people who permitted the organization and the streaming of, uh, of this video uh, are, uh, are mainly PhD students, in some cases master students, but mainly PhD students. And uh, something more that uh, the PhD program can add to the personal curriculum and let's say also, we can say also in a, in a sort of ethical way, is uh, the importance of uh, voluntary activities for providing a service to a community. We hope, to, we tried to do the best for providing this service, this learning experience, as we can say in this way, to, to the community. And uh, we hope that uh, in some way you appreciated our effort. I would like to thank every, everybody for, uh, for participating and also the, our, uh, the people who saw the live streaming on YouTube. Thank you for your attention. Uh, stay safe and uh, see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.